one of the important things about raising and guiding children and even adults is three basic things. The first is structure, which basically gives a schedule that keeps the child or adult on a good track toward their goal or pursuit. And this is kind of the beauty of schools and work. They give the child or adult a structure to work around and build their life around and actually implement themselves in the social structure. The second thing is discipline. And this helps the child or adult realize they have free will that needs to develop and learn to choose what is good even if it is difficult or choose what is necessary for their development to become what they desire to become. A good psychologist once mentioned, you should not teach children to do what they love, because when they find out it's difficult, they will quit. But you should teach them to do what they want, because when we want something, it's on the level of the will, where we have that determination and grit to, to get to that desire. And the last thing, and the final thing, is dependable rules. That is, if I do follow these particular rules that I rationally know are good for me and others, they will bring me into a certain harmony in this life. As one Benedict, Benedict the monk mentioned, all of us love the rules when they're easy to follow, but make excuses when they become difficult. Therefore, to develop and become a good Christian in the social structure, it involves these three things primarily to kind of direct our freedom. Otherwise, freedom has no real direction, no goal, or no purpose, and can even turn in against us and become some chaotic mess. When this kind of mentality is lived out, it often leads down dark paths where the mind begins to kind of understand it's kind of a lost in the sea of aimless freedom. Pope Benedict XVI once mentioned, and I'm paraphrasing, one of the saddest things to see is a person who has no direction, or good direction, I might add. In one sense, they don't know how to live out their days, how to grow in holiness, how to be steadfast in virtue, how to contemplate God's word and goodness and act upon, or even simply to be attentive to God's providential care in their life, which absolves all of our worries. Now, our salvation lies on conditional clauses of choices with grace in freedom. Through discernment and knowledge of God's law and his ways, for salvation requires a heart that structures its life around Christ as the most important person in this world. Also, they realize his teachings are hard, and they brace themselves for the challenges, and are steadfast in the church's discipline because they're, they realize that it's leading them towards salvation, and they can lose that salvation. Finally, the rules are obvious, and we break the Ten Commandments. It reveals how hard our heart is, and how it needs to be broken to get to the flesh inside. For that is what a contrite heart is. A broken heart because of one's sin. That God in Christ came to men through the medicine of mercy, but without demanding less than the commandments. This is what every saint learned, to cultivate their life around them through a relationship with Christ that is structured, disciplined, and where the person knows there are rules and boundaries because they're in a covenant. They're bound to Christ and one another, where we develop a real relationship with the living God that runs deep in the cleansing blood of Christ. A love from the sacrificial and sacred heart of the risen Lord. The Son of God who lives and who breathes.